Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and today we're gonna talk about the embryology of heart or you can say the formation of heart and this thing was asked by Amar Khan and uh, here we go with the formation or embryology of heart we are going from the basic from the basic till the development like we're starting from the basic stuff from ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm till the formation of the heart or the complete structure of the heart so stay with me till the end so you must you will be knowing that how the heart is formed so let's let's begin like um, from this color coding you can understand that this the most dorsal structure is the ectoderm this is the mesoderm and uh, which is in green uh, which is in uh, orange and this one is the endoderm all right and uh, the ectoderm has uh, different parts like there's this is the paraxial part this is the intermediate part of the mesoderm and this is the somatic part like uh, at the at the end at the lateral side the mesoderm divides into somatic part and a splanchnic part all right so what happens uh, the uh, what happens the vascular system appear uh, in the in the middle of the third week because embryo actually can't afford to fulfill its nutritional requirements so it need it need a heart so uh, at the beginning middle of the third week the heart start to uh, start to form so what happens the progenitor heart cells actually lies in the epi epiblast uh, near the uh, epiblast near the cranial side so what happens the 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 cells move downward and move near the splanchnic side over here all right like this below the splanchnic or you can say near the splanchnic uh, side or in the splanchnic area the the progenitor heart cell which ar 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 arise from the ectoderm move to the splanchnic heart cell uh, uh, to the splanchnic area or you can say they migrate to the splanchnic layer of lateral plate mesoderm and and kind of form the horseshoe shape uh the horseshoe shaped which is actually called the primary heart field we're going to discuss about the primary heart field uh nearby but you must remember that the, uh, here we have the primary heart field which is phf in short um that is uh, near this planking area and uh, the secondary heart field which is also another term from which the different structures arrive and uh, from the primary heart field like uh, the both right and left atria arrive uh, arri from the uh, primary heart field and left ventricle also arri arise from here and most of the part of the right ventricle also arise from the primary heart field cells all right and from the left from the secondary heart field which is over here which cannot we cannot see it here but it's uh, from the secondary heart field we get conus cordis and truncus arteriosus these terms may seem a little bit wiggly to you but uh, i'm going to explain what is conus cordis and truncus arteriosus and in a little bit uh, in a little bit uh, detail but uh, just yeah, you have you must have a picture this is what is truncus arteriosus and this is what is bulbous cordis over here we also have the conus cordis nearby we're coming to this diagram uh, just in a bit all right we are done with the diag this diagram we have common uh, arrangement that how uh, the progenitor heart cell arrive and move to this planchnic uh, layer let's move uh, to the end of the diagram that is this one so you, you must follow the color coding from here you must follow the color coding because uh, this color coding will be similar uh, as we move on so here we have a good picture like uh, this is the ectoderm and we have clearly made the mesoderm like uh, we have differentiated mesoderm so clearly you can understand it like this is intermediate mesoderm these both are intermediate mesoderm we got somites in the uh, in the middle and uh, as we go laterally we got on the upper upper edge we got somatic layer of lateral plate mesoderm and down there we got Splanchnic or visceral layer of lateral plate mesoderm 
And the last layer, which is here, which is actually ventral, the most ventral is endoderm. We all know that the most ventral uh, the is mesoderm, and the most dorsal is the ectoderm. In between, we got mesoderm. Mesoderm, we have divided into structure. And the space, this is space, that is between the somatic layer of lateral plate mesoderm and the visceral layer of plate, uh, lateral plate mesoderm is called intraembryonic coelom. Must remember that. Intraembryonic coelom is the space between the somatic layer of lateral plate mesoderm and the splenic or visceral layer of the lateral plate mesoderm. And let's move further to understand this uh, much more in detail. So what happens, um, as we go down there, look, let me, let me just explain it with this diagram so you can understand. So what happens, this, the endoderm and the, uh, and the visceral layer, or you must say splanchnic layer of lateral plate mesoderm moves inward, or you can say ventral and downward. All right, they move inward like this is also attached. This also moves inward like they come together like this. You know, you kind of they come together and kind of attach. When they are attached, you must uh, just imagine if they attach, they form a tube, right? But in the ne next diagram I'm going to show, which is a little bit weird, you know, it's a little bit weird, but it's, uh, it's how they, they come together and join and form a tube. So just see this diagram if you don't uh, kind of get it see the diagram again and again just reverse the uh, video and here we go again with this all right again we have got uh, the ectoderm uh, this is the uh, the above layer uh, which was the somatic layer and this is the um, visceral layer or you can say splanchnic layer which have actually what happened this this is the endoderm what happened when we look at this diagram when they got folded, you look, this is folding, all right? They're folding, they formed a tube. You see that? They are forming a tube. And the tube is joined together. As the tube joins, as the endoderm joins, also the whistle layer also jo joins together. And kind of this kind of grizzly structure is formed. And some other structures also appear in the splanchnic layer of the little plate mesoderm. So what happens? This is uh, it's still the yolk sac is attached, which we, we will lose uh, soon. And we have this developing gut tube, like we have got this because the gut tube arises from, okay, tell me, the gut tube actually arises from the endoderm. So this is how we are going to, just in the next picture, we will understand how the gut tube is formed because this is going to attach themselves and this is going to be removed. The yolk sac is, we are going to uh, get rid of the yolk sac and some new structures are arising here. So this is the whole magic happens. In the splanchnic layer of the lateral plate mesoderm, we have this structure, these two structures called the endothelial tubes. There are two endothelial tubes you are actually viewing this in, in this manner, but uh, all right, um, this is the endothelial tube and other two structures which are above the endothelial tube are dorsal aorta. And from the actual, from this endothelial tube, we are going to get the heart, or you can say the pre-heart. And from this dorsal aorta, we are going to get the other structures, all right? Or you can say the artery, main aortas. And let's move to another structure. Okay, okay. So what happened in the next, so what, what is going to happen in the next structure? We are again going to fold the somatic layer and the ectoderm downward, you know, kind of pushing the structure downward, you know, push the structure move this way. Get it, get the idea? The structure move this way. And they, the ectoderm and the somatic layer are joined together and they are coming and will come together and find a kind of a complete loop. So this is how it will look like in the next diagram. All right, uh, this is the right picture for it. So what happens? Actoderm, the somatic layer of lateral plate mesoderm came together and completed the complete loop and this is all closed in, all right? And uh, what happened? And we, and this thing forms a cavity, which is called the pericardial cavity because they kind kind of join together and they form the cavity and the pericardial cavity and even the, uh, even in this stage, the yolk sac has uh, the uh, the uh, what is that? 
the gut tube has joined together and as we, we go much more we, as we move the gut tube the gut tube is going to join together forming the uh, foregut all right and uh, the uh, this one the endothelium endocardium is also going to fuse there are in the before picture we have got two endocardium but as they go down as they come together as the gut tube as the foregut is formed this is also going to come together but a little bit ventral it's going to a little bit downward ventrally and it is going to form the endocardium right the endocardium and the endocardium or which is fused which was before uh, before there were two endothel endothelial tubes joined together forming the endocardium uh, f oh sorry uh, forming this endo endocardium all right and um, which is uh, which is surrounded by the cardiac jelly and myocardium in the end we are going to illustrate by an example this diagram because you uh, i cannot show you 3d picture here but uh, i will try to explain it in the 3d form and uh, this is what is what i would, what I would call the dorsal aorta uh, all right this is we haven't mentioned it here another diagram but this is the dorsal aorta the two dorsal aorta which are actually attached to the endocardium remember that that's that's uh, i might uh, i will show you in a 3d form just in a little bit but the dorsal aorta and the endocardium are actually attached together so uh, just have a clear picture of it this is the ectoderm somatic layer and this is the pericardial cavity dorsal mesocardium, endocardium, cardiac jelly uh, surrounding the endocardium, and uh, surrounding the cardiac jelly is the myocardium, and this is intraembryonic uh, 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 siloam, you can say that, uh, but after that it is going to change its name to the pericardial cavity soon after. All right, and at this stage we are going also going to get the neural tube and notochord. Okay, let me just going to explain it in the 3D form how they both are attached together. All right. So, consider this thing, like, like, I mean, like, look at that thing. You are viewing this fr from the above, as you have cut it. For example, this is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, embryo. You are just going to cut it up, cut it from side, and you are viewing it from the above side. But as you move it downward, like we are now, we are now going to see this thing from like this, uh, this angle. But we are going to use only this thing and foregut. We are going to see the foregut, the dorsal aorta, and the and this uh, what is called the endocar endocardium. All right. So we are going to start with this this thing, which is called endocardium. So this is our endocardium, which is actually fused, which which fuses later. You know, we, we are going to show in another diagram. But before before fusion, it looks like this from above side. Before fusion, it looks like this, and it fuses together and kind of form the structure the initial heart structure which is a kind of a tube tube shape and uh, look at just look at this diagram you are viewing this all right let's get a little bit back go to this diagram we have two uh two uh, endothelial tubes all right two endocardium and this is here all right they are going to join together and from the front we have got dorsal aorta we have got right and left dorsal aorta, like this one. This is right, this is left dorsal aorta. This is the tube just fused together from here. This is fused together. We are going to try it. And from the front, we have got two dorsal aorta. And these two dorsal aorta, are uh, the right and left, are also going to join and form the common dorsal aorta. And in between, like they are going to join together. I haven't uh, clearly seen that. Like. They are going to join together from the front and from the back we have got fused endocardium and in between in between we have the foregut here is the foregut all right here is the foregut like in the front you can see this is the endocardium the foregut in the middle and as we go dorsally we have got the dorsal aorta so blood what happens blood comes from there from downward Goes through the aortic arc to the go to the dorsal aorta and again to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the embryo. All right, and returns backward. So other the other structure which are surrounding the endo surrounding the endocardium 
are the cardiac jelly. So it looks like comparatively like this. So we are just losing the forgot. So this is uh, how it looks like. Like just consider that it's fused together. So are we clear now? Right? Now this is endocardium fused and we have got cardiac jelly on it. All right? And now what happens? And now what happens? And we are also going to cover it uh, with the myocardium. And when they are covered by the uh, myocardium, the connective tissue, uh, what happens? The heart starts to work. The uh, heart starts to pump blood. So this is it. So here we go. Um, this is uh, okay. We have got a good picture. This is uh, the this is the endocardium surrounded by the cardiac jelly, which is inside. And in the final, we have got the myocardium, which actually helps in the pumping of the blood. We got aortic arc, and in between, we have got uh, this full gut. So this is the simple picture how we can look it from uh, the above and to the till till the downward. And let's move to the another picture what finally happens how this endocardium is going to form so now we are going to learn about this one not we are not going to discuss further about dorsal aorta we have already talked about a little bit about it but we are going to talk in detail about this vasculogenesis and the uh, further videos all right so here we go further and here is another picture all right uh, we have we missed another idea which is was islands all right these blood islands which form in the area which are here these are the primitive blood vessels which are actually formed over here so just leave that thing we are just going to talk about the this thing which is the endocar endocardium how they are fused so what happens in the initial phase we have got two tubes the endothelial tubes the two endothelial tubes endothelial tubes are, are over here so these endothelial tubes are going to connect together forming a single tube all right this is going to be our future heart and this two on the day 20 these two are going to be connected on the day 21 and this is the how it looks like on the day 21 and in the on the day, day 22 this structure is going to be converted into this structure and this structure we have divided into on the day 21 we have got the primitive atrium We've got the primitive ventricle, we have got the bulbous cardis. So we've got three structures, primitive atrium, primitive ventricle, the bulbous cardis, and the final structure, which is the most uh, on the above, uh, which is called the truncus arteriosus. And this is all about uh, this structure. And here we go with another, within, uh, with another structure on the day 23, the, uh, the the ventricle the heart is going to be t the heart is going to get its shape so how we are going to talk about loop we're going to talk about the loop and uh, not we are not going to talk about the looping of heart now but we are going to discuss the looping of heart in another in another video so that's it for today and please keep visiting Thai schooling and make sure you comment us and tell us what you don't understand and we'll make it easy as possible